Hello and welcome to this edition of Chief Chat with Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, James Cody. I'm your host, Tech Sergeant Holly Roberts Davis. For those of you watching for the first time, Chief Chat is a great forum for airmen across the globe to get their questions answered straight from the top. Chief, there have been a lot of changes in the way we do business in the Air Force over the last year or so to include the size of the force and the revamp of the EPR promotion process, all that. Um, you travel quite a bit, and I know you were recently in the Pacific, so when you're speaking to those airmen out there, what are they saying? What kind of questions are they asking you? Yeah, so I think you can imagine lots of questions by our airmen about these changes, as well as a lot of other things about the future of our Air Force. Given the fact that we are the smallest Air Force in our history, you know, globally engaged at unprecedented levels, still engaged in the longest sustained combat operations, and that's not lost on any of our airmen. Uh, obviously, or their families. So we get into that a little bit and, and kind of answer their questions. We also uh, have an opportunity to engage on the changes we are making to the enlisted evaluation system as well as the weighted airman promotion system. And most of the time, you know, the, the reason for the visit is one, so I can have that level of engagement with them, consistently make myself available to them, first and foremost, always to thank them and their families for their service and their sacrifice. But again, that dialogue that goes back and forth to get to a depth of some of the questions can only happen when you're in a room with people. So we try to do that as much as possible. Awesome. Well, I think it's great that you get to get out there and interact with these airmen. Um, of course, you can't get out there and visit every single one of those airmen. So Chief Chat is a way for others to ask their questions and voice their concerns. So let's go ahead and get things started. Um, today we've got some questions that came in from airmen wanting to know about PME and communication, but obviously they're um, really concerned about the new um, EPR system. So let's go ahead and start with an email that we received from Tech Sergeant Derek Allen. He wants to know about the online course 15 and how that's going to affect leadership in the NCO tier. He writes, I understand the competencies we need to learn, but moving to an ILE with an NCO ADL, I do not believe this is the answer. I'm expected to teach myself things that others before me have learned from a subject matter expert in the NCOA. I feel that I'm being shortchanged and being required to teach myself and possibly am not fully learning the concepts. Will the Air Force senior enlisted leadership take a good hard look at this program? Sure. So I would start off uh, saying that we did take a good hard look at it. That's why why we chose to do this method of delivery and educating the force only because first and foremost it is the proven method with the highest levels of learning is blended learning so to put you in an academic environment in a classroom while there are certainly some great benefits to that that is traditionally how we've done it it is very instructor centric uh, if you have a great instructor that's motivated about the material and an engaging group in the in the uh, seminar then it's a pretty good interaction uh, but if it's not that engaging of a subject and it's not, you know, that maybe a motivating and inspired instructor that's kind of up on that material, it can be a little bit lackluster. But at the end of that session, whatever that may be, 45 minutes, an hour and a half, what it may not be, you're at where you're at and then we move on. So the idea is here in a blended approach is to give you the academics up front in a distance learning environment, which is learner-centric, meaning if you know the concepts and can grasp them quicker, you run right through it. If it takes you a little bit longer to get through that, then it takes you longer. And if you need help, you can call our help desk out there. There's a service center that will help you. You can submit your questions. And there are people down there that are absolutely the subject matter experts on the curriculum, and they can help you through some of that. So it's not like we've discounted that. We've really tried to make it very learner-centric and been able to deliver it now in this blended approach, the DL-specific portion, and a very, you know, predictable way. You'll get it based on your year group. And then you will come in to the intermediate leadership experience as we're talking about the NCO Academy. And you'll actually get to do what everybody likes to do when they get into a classroom with other airmen. And that is, it's about the experience with the other airmen. So we will build on those academics that you, you received in the distance learning portion of that and take you to higher cognitive levels of understanding of the material. So it's actually a better experience. Uh, you know, it really values your time in a way that if we're going to bring you together, you need to be learning from each other as well as having a, you know, cadre of facilitators that can help, you know, guide you through those discussions. Well, it looks like that's just one way that we're trying to head forward. towards the future. Uh, Chief, the Air Force seems to be applying uh, that kind of modern approach to a lot of the ways that we do things now. Um, our next question is actually a video question from A1C Charles Anderson, and he wants to know about applying that same modern approach to getting the Air Force message out. Go ahead and take a look over here, please. Sure. 
My question for you today is, President Obama has had a lot of successful publicity endeavors, such as the Thanks Obama video and the more recent Correspondence Dinner. In your opinion, would the Air Force have better communication if they took a more modern approach? Hey, Charles, I appreciate the question. So I think you're right. I mean, we have to continue to adapt and evolve our method of communicating with the force. So a more modern approach, as you kind of articulate, does make sense. And we are looking to do that, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, we're putting effort into that every day. We're standing here today as one of those modern methods. We've done things like Reddit, you know, AMAs, and uh, we're using Facebook. But uh, I couldn't agree more that I think we have to continue to look for every opportunity to communicate with our force in the ways that they want to be communicated with. And I don't think that's one size fits all for our airmen. I, I mean, I think the different demographics, you know, are more comfortable in certain areas. So I think he's right. We need to continue to do better in this area. As I mentioned in the beginning, the changes um, to the promotion system and the eval uh, system, the enlisted performance reports, they're definitely weighing pretty heavy on the minds of those airmen out there. I'm sure you've got lots of questions from them. Um, but our next question comes from Facebook, where Chris Newfield asks, if the EPR form is being shown on road shows, then why not just release the dang thing? Why does it feel like the form itself is a secret? There is no plausible reason to keep it from the enlisted force unless, of course, the form isn't ready. So yeah. I think he's calling you out there, Chief. Yeah, so I think so. <laughs> so maybe he answered his own question. So he's absolutely right. The form is not ready to be released. Why? Because it's a PDF type form, an Adobe PDF form that's a smart form. It, when you select certain things, it impacts other things on the form, unlike the forms that we've been using in FormFlow. So that's exactly why we haven't released it. We could give you a snapshot of it, and that's what the Roadshow is doing, but it's an interactive form, and we're writing the scripts that's associated with that right now, so that's why it's not released. We could put it out, it would be a screenshot. You would say, well, what does this mean? I mean, it's really going to be less exciting than I think everybody wants to be excited about. It is a form. <laughs> Just saying that out loud makes it less exciting, doesn't it? I mean, I understand why Amber want to see it. We want to share it with them, and we will as soon as possible. So it is not a secret. That's why it's out there. But it's not ready. All right. Yeah, and I know a lot of people tend to interpret things the way sure. that they want to as well. So you want to make sure that it's the right, right. form before we release so it. So we're going to release the form, and I promise you, once it gets out there with the tens of thousands of airmen and supervisors that are going to look at it, we'll learn some more. We'll have to make adjustments to it. This is big change, and it's going to take some time for us to get it exactly where it needs to be, and that's okay. I mean, we're doing it the right way. Again, I, I can understand the anxiety, so I don't, uh, I'm not trying to discount. I want to see it. Everybody wants to see it. But about 30 seconds after you see it, you'll be over that. <laughs> and, you know, you just really will. Right. Okay, great. Um, to keep on topic with the EPR form, I know, again, everybody is curious about it. Um, we have another Facebook question, but this time it's coming from Matt Bianco. He asks, as someone who has served for 20 plus years, I understand and appreciate why we had a need for a change to the EPR. That still does not erase the question in my mind of who was involved in the process, how many of our mid-level leaders were involved in making this change that will affect the rest of theirs and their subordinates' careers. Sure, no, I think that's a fair question. So to be honest with you, we approached this. General Wells handed it off to myself and the enlisted board of directors, which are your senior enlisted leaders at the major command level and COCOM level. And he handed to us initially with the direction what to do. So we put that together. We brought in a team of experts down at AFPC. We had PhDs that know, work on this stuff. We had subject matter experts uh, from the personnel system. And we had other airmen uh, advise us. And then once we came up with that first initial draft, we have read team this countless times. So every tier has been involved in this. Now, the idea that it would go out to every single airman in the Air Force and then we would somehow be able to filter all that feedback, I think everybody understands how that's not plausible in any Way, shape or form and also understand that this form is being developed not for the individual airmen but for the Air Force you know the in, the form is for the Air Force to be able to look at something and be able to see how you perform you're interested in it because it's about you but it's not for you it's about you the airman comprehensive assessment feedback is about you and for you uh, type of thing so again I think fair questions but we've read team this we've had you know very junior airmen in these uh, working groups as well as all the way up to senior officers and everything in between to give us feedback on it to ask the questions and we've made you know countless adjustments based on that uh, those working groups coming together 
Right. I mean, we've had the old form for quite some time now, yeah. so it's going to take a little bit of effort. Yeah, yeah. So, again, the idea that we did in a vacuum, nothing could be further from the truth. We brought in all the right type of people to give us feedback. Well, um, with that new form and the whole system, let's talk about implementing that. Um, of course, there's going to be even more questions about implementing it mm -hmm. um, because that's really the key to this system being successful is making sure, sure that we implement it properly. Um, on Facebook, Zach Luther asks, what is going to be done to change the mindsets of the unit supervisors who think that even though you may be the go-to person, you're only a three because you didn't lead at least three bake sales for the five, six council. Basically, yeah. getting those supervisors to focus on performance yeah. instead of the old mindset. So I think the new form and, and the guidance that will be with the form will really clearly indicate how primary duty performance is where the effort needs to be placed. There'll be you know about eight lines where you document your primary duty performance. There'll be two lines in the whole person concept, of which I'm not sure that a bake sale will measure up to make and use one of those two lines. It may. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but but I also think we should be genuine in this conversation. Do we really believe that's been the case? That if you didn't do three bake sales, that your performance wasn't going to be documented accurately. So so I, I understand the legitimacy of the question and the concern that is it going to be overridden by <coughs> other things, you know, other than uh, primary uh, duty performance, and it's not. I mean, and again, we have an opportunity to do that. And to be honest, there aren't going to be any numbers, so there is no three on the new EPRs. Um, your promotion points are only in play when you're promotion eligible and they're based on a promotion recommendation. Your performance is being assessed every year. There are no uh, restrictions on that. You perform based on how you perform towards the expectations and standards outlined in your feedback and that's the way the form will be. So, I mean, we got to own this thing and I think the rating chain that has to look at it, the feedback will accompany, the ACA will accompany the EPR through the rating chain to ensure that was done properly. I mean, we've set this in motion that do the right thing. Uh, Chief, it looks yeah. like that is all the time that we have for it's all the questions. time we have. Yeah, huh? that's it. That's right. it. Um, so unfortunately, we weren't able to get to all of the questions. Um, okay. But don't worry, if someone out there would like to see more from the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, you can always follow him on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash CMSAF Cody, or you can look for future editions of Chief Chat and other Air Force TV products by liking our Facebook page, Air Force TV, and you can always check out previous editions of Chief Chat on our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash AFTV radio. So thank you again, Chief, Thanks, for Holly. stopping by. And for Air Force TV at Fort Meade, Maryland, I'm Tech Sergeant Holly Roberts Davis. Thanks for watching.